For the last few weeks, you've been seeing me use Garuda Linux. This is the last video you'll see in Garuda for a while. In this video, I'll be talking about my thoughts for Garuda, as well as why I've decided that my YouTube machine needs a different distro. So for those that don't know, we're going to give a brief overview of Garuda. You can skip ahead to my pros and cons if that's what you're more interested in. Garuda is an Arch-based distro. It's mostly known for its flagship Dragonized KDE Plasma version, which looks great and has an awesome default theme compared to most distros. Most distros that run KDE Plasma just throw it out there with a the default theme and figure it out yourself, right? And to an extent, that's fine, but a lot of times people need to see something that looks interesting. And that is one area where I feel like many Linux distributions don't sell themselves enough. And so for Garuda and others like it, like Zorin OS, that is a primary point that they try to push forward with. I believe Zero Linux is one that really focuses on that. To me, that was an interesting aspect of Garuda. One other aspect of Garuda that's interesting is by default, the AUR and Chaotic AUR are enabled. That's the Arch User Repository. So the difference with the Chaotic AUR is the Chaotic AUR actually has binaries in it. With the standard Arch User Repository, you would have to actually build those packages. And depending on the package, that could take, you know, five, 10 minutes to several hours. It just depends on how strong your CPU was and how big the package was. The Chaotic AUR is really nice for people that need to build larger packages and don't have a great CPU to do that. Naturally, the problem comes in, it's a lot harder to actually verify that that binary is the correct binary. That is one kind of advantage I think you'd have in the AUR is you can actually see how the package is being built. But naturally, you have to use the AUR and the chaotic AUR at your own risk. So let's talk about the pros and then we'll get to the cons. So the pros, obviously you have that great look. You have that great default theme. I believe it's sweetified and then dragonized for KDE Plasma. Overall, I think it looks really good. I'm not as big of a fan of the red and kind of yellowish on the terminal, but overall, I think it does a really great job of showing off what a Linux distribution can look like by default. The second aspect that I really liked was the welcome screen. The welcome screen honestly is one of the best ones out there. It gives you so many things that you can go into and configure with just a click. It's really cool that they have tools for ButterFS, for you know managing Pipewire or Jack or Pulse, and a lot of different gaming options as well. There is a lot to like in the welcome screen, and I hope more Linux distributions take note and think about what they can do with their welcome screen, because this is a great example of what you can really give to a user when you do it. I'd also point out, for me personally, I may tweak a few things, but I generally leave a Linux distribution alone once I've got it to the point where I find it usable. So that's why oftentimes in my videos, you see me with a default background because that's just not something I typically go in and change. Furthermore, for a distro review in particular, I have to leave those settings as default as possible because after so many changes, it becomes my version of the distro as opposed to Garuda Linux. So that's why oftentimes you'll see me really just stick to the same settings because ultimately, as long as I can make it work, that's what matters to me. There are some things like single, like doing double click instead of single click that really gets on my nerves sometimes. So we'll go ahead and change that. I think for Garuda Linux, I enabled Flatpak. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I really fundamentally changed about the system, but not really. I've kept it very much stock settings on purpose. And I will be doing so for the next distro until I get a review out. After that, I'll probably really start looking to optimize my workflow and things like that, assuming I'm gonna stick with that one. That being said, let's talk about the cons. And keep in mind, these are an experiment of one. I'm not trying to throw shade at the distro. I'm not anything. This is just the problems that I had or potential issues I could see other people having. The first con is that Applications like OBS are customized for Garuda. While this sounds really good, and in aspects it is really good, I'm still waiting on OBS 28 update to drop in Garuda. That update was about three and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, depending on how you want to count the half week. But 
it's still not there. To me, for a distribution that is so focused on gamers and, you know, content creation and stuff like that, to the point where they've added a custom version of OBS, it seems like an app that you'd get updated quicker, especially with some of the nice things that OBS 28 adds. Naturally, again, I could go and install a Flatpak version of it and have it being updated, but part of the reason I was interested to try Garuda was that I was curious to see how that version of OBS worked. And while for the most part it works pretty well, again, you're kind of lagging behind some of the updates, which is kind of weird in an Arch-based distro view, but I get it. There are other things that they have to prioritize. So one weird thing that I came across as I was getting ready to make this move, I was actually really already considering making a move to a different distro anyway, but something we're getting to happened that made me force that move a bit faster. As I installed Etcher, or rather, as I downloaded the app package version of Etcher, and I tried to run it, I kept getting an error, and I'll show you that error on the screen now. But I had to actually run Etcher as sudo to get that to cooperate, and I'm not sure why that is. I've never had to do that before. So other app packages, I, I pulled down Telegram and just launched it to see if it was doing the same thing, but it wasn't. It's something specifically about Etcher. Maybe it's a newer Etcher version that... I'm just not familiar with because I haven't downloaded a new version of Etcher in a while. But that's just something that I found a little strange compared to every other distribution I've run Etcher on where it'll pop up in the background at one point and ask you for your, you know, admin password. I'm kind of mixed on the Fire Dragon browser. I don't really like the default search page because it constantly zooms out for me back to the standard resolution and it gets really annoying. I prefer to always have that zoomed in and I'm I mean I'm sure with some time I could tweak it but it was just really weird that it kept resetting on me I assume that's because it's a new instance of the search and that's you know maybe they're doing some kind of forwarding or something to make that work but it was just kind of odd and it kind of ended up getting on my nerves to constantly have to re-zoom in that page the other thing that I would say about that browser is that the dark reader being able by default can make things a little funky at times in CSS. There are times where the dark on dark text looks a little weird and it makes it a little difficult to read. But I think that's mostly an artifact of that dark reader. So it can be something that you may have to toggle on and off or even disable altogether if that's something that ends up annoying you. Though to be fair, it wasn't a huge deal, but there were times where it was just a little inconvenient. So here is the reason you're getting the Gerudo video this week instead of next week. Because my USB interface, my audio USB interface, just decided it was no longer going to work with Gerudo. I, I don't know why. Some updates I did this week apparently have done something. And it's probably me being dumb and having creating the issue myself, but I can't think of what I would have done to do that. I have tried running it through a different USB port on my USB hub. I have tried connecting it directly to the machine. I have connected it to various other machines. It still works on my Manjaro machine, which I'm using right now to record this, and it still works on my Mac M1. So it's purely on that Garuda machine. Naturally, if something comes up and for some reason it's a USB port issue, which I don't think it is, but if something comes up when I'm, I go to my next distro and it's still happening, I will come back and definitely add a update in the comments below to clarify that or add an annotation or something. But I don't, I, I really don't understand what's happening. Like it just doesn't even appear. And I can't, so I can't get really any audio because I can't get this mic or the headphones that run through it to pick up at all. For those that saying it's an arch thing, I don't really know that that's the case. I just updated 700 packages in Manjaro and rebooted, and it's still working. So, I don't know. And once again, I'm not trying to throw this out to the distro. It could entirely be my own fault and something stupid that I've done. And I am an experiment of one, and that's it. I know other people have tried Garuda and really, really like it. But what I'm finding is, if you're going to go Arch, you need to come as close to you can to Vanilla Arch as possible. Just because there seems to be issues when you get into Manjaro and stuff like Gerudo where they've really tried to customize a lot more. And I, I don't fault them for it. I don't fault them for trying it. But that's just been my experience with Arch. Eventually this Manjaro machine will be 
change to something else. I just have to figure out what that is. But that is it for this week. That is my Gerudo review. I hope it wasn't too rambly. I wanted to try to give as much context as possible because again, I do not want to be in the business of being negative toward an open source project. I know a lot of people worked hard on Garuda, but I just have to come to the conclusion Garuda is not for me, at least at this time. I think it's a very promising distro and I really want to like it. There are many aspects that I do like, but there are some paper cuts and some other issues that I think are going to have to be worked out. And I'm sure that with enough time and research, I could have gotten some of these done, but my entire intention with this was again to look at it from just a person who wanted to install and go and so that's what i've done for the past month or so and we'll see what it's like on the next distribution i try thanks for watching and have a great day i will see you next time